Listen, there's no better way to start 2021 than spending a little time praising Jesus. Listen, I don't want you to miss what God has for you today. I think God's got a great word for you this morning. Every year we seek out a word that God wants to give us focus and direction for the next year. And uh, that's what I want to share with you this morning. But before I get to that, I just want to remind you what 2020 has been. Because I think a lot of times what happens is we forget all that happened in 2020 because so much happened. And so many major things happened. And we begin to get focused on those. And we forget everything that has happened throughout 2020. Like this. I bet most of you forgot. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle quit the royal family. You knew it was going to be a bad year when a prince says, now nah, I'm done. I would just rather not do that and just live as a normal person, make minimum wage. Like, what? We should have known right then. This is not going to be a good year. What is wrong with them? Then, I don't know uh, if you knew this, but in 2020, uh, COVID-19 happened. There was a disease that went around. Um, also, 2020, Kobe Bryant died. That helicopter accident. Also in 2020, um, they impeached Donald Trump. And um, one person had a problem and brought something towards Donald Trump. And um, they spent two years and hundreds of millions of dollars investigating that. Um, and so... Finally, to figure out that it really wasn't true. Um, Harvey Weinstein was convicted. Businesses were closed because of the pandemic. People were laid off and lost their jobs. The stock market took a dive. Black Lives Matter had protests all over the nation. King John un faked his death. At least we think that. You remember he disappeared? Y'all don't even remember. I mean, 2020 was full of so much stuff. Y'all don't even know that. Kim Jong-un disappeared for like three or four weeks, and everybody's like, he has to be dead. Otherwise, he'd be out on his balcony waving, and he's not there. And yeah, he faked his death. Um, Biden became the Democratic presidential nominee. Um, the murder hornets. Y'all remember those things? Like two inches, three inches big, massive, massive hornets. If one comes towards me, I promise you I'm pushing you in front of me. Those things are too big and I don't like needles. Uh, that's why I don't have tattoos or my ears pierced. Uh, all through college, I wanted a tattoo. I wanted to pierce my ears. But every time I would start crying and couldn't do it. And so I guarantee you if a hornet that big comes towards me, somebody else has taken that. Um, remember uh, the Beirut explosions that happened? Kamala Harris was chosen as the Democratic VP. Uh, Chadwick Boseman, Black Panther died. Uh, the West Coast wildfires. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. Uh, schools were shut down and parents were forced to now become teachers and now students are illiterate. It's true. I promise you. Listen, one of those things, like I tell my kids, I'm doing math. I got a huge problem with math because they're telling me this is the way we're supposed to do it. And I'm like, that way's stupid. <laughs> this is the way you need to do it. And they're like, no, this is how we're supposed to do it. I'm like, well, you do it that way. And for the 15 minutes you're working on that one problem, I'll be done with the whole assignment. <laughs> yeah, keep doing that. And they're like, we have to do it this way. And I'm like, not if I'm helping you. They're like, but we have to. We'll get a bad grade. And I'm like, I'm your teacher. You get 100. Come to find out, I really wasn't their teacher. They got a bad grade. But it's still stupid. Uh, schools were shut down. Trump test positive for COVID. Uh, someone you know, close to you, has tested positive for COVID. Someone you know has died from COVID. I mean, it is, it is all very, very close and very, very personal. And by now, all of us have somebody uh, that we are in close relationship with that has been affected um, by COVID. Mail-in ballots were sent out. Joe Biden became the president-elect, according to the media. Uh, half the country questions the election and the integrity of the election. <laughs> hey. 
Uh, I can't keep, I, I got to quit or I'll go off on something. Um, Alex Trebek, Jeopardy, he passed away. A vaccine came out and half the country is still fighting the election fraud. It's 2020. That's what we faced. It's a lot of things that happen. And here's what I feel like happens a lot of times during the year is what ends up happening is we flip the calendar and we think by flipping the calendar, everything's going to change. And we think because now we get to write 2021 on different things that all of a sudden 2020 is past. It's behind us. The struggles that we had in 2020, they're not going to be the struggles that we have going forward. Your marriage was a struggle last year. And it was hard last year. But praise the Lord. I went to bed December 31st and I woke up January 1st. And now all of a sudden, we're great. We love each other. Kind to each other. Laughing. You know, and, and all it took was the year to change in order for that to happen. You know, your kids. I don't know about you, but my kids, their volume through the pandemic and now through, uh, you, you know, through all the quarantine stuff and everything like that. Right before Christmas, we had at least one child home from school for 45 days straight. At least one. And over that time and now over the break, Christmas break, I feel like their volume, they have found another cord in their vocal cord that they did not know they had. And they are doing everything they can to use that cord. They are so loud. And so then I'm like, quit being loud. And they're like, you're loud. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, you quit being loud. And so then the volume is just like. <sighs> um, and so maybe it's your kids and you just thought, man, we're going to bed 20, uh, 2020 and we're getting up 2021 and everything's going to be different. Maybe it's your attitude. Maybe it's your work. Maybe you hated your work last year, but then all of a sudden you woke up January 1st and you're like, I love my job. It's the best job ever. I didn't love it in 2020, but now 2021, for some reason, flipping that calendar, it has been so good. Or maybe your friends, or maybe your debt. Maybe you were hoping 2021, you got up early and you were like, oh, please, just something happened. And now I've got a ton of money in my account. Please, 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 please. And you look at it and you still owe a ton of money. Credit cards are still there. Like, dead gum it. Here's what I want you to understand. If you don't change anything, nothing's going to change. If you don't change anything, nothing is going to change. Just because you get to put a one behind the two doesn't make a difference. If you were lazy in 2020, you're going to be lazy in 2021. If you were unhappy in 2020, you're going to be unhappy in 2021. If you were fearful in 2020, you're going to be fearful in 2021. If you don't change anything, nothing is going to change. Insanity. Craziness. Losing your mind literally means this. To do the same thing over and over, but expect different results every single time. I think this is what happens a lot of times for the new year. We're standing there, we're hanging out, you know, just five Four, three, two, one. Yeah, happy new year. Everything's changed. Woo! But I'm not changing anything. I'm still the same jerk that I was in 2020. It's just 2021 now. And you think because the calendar's changed, all of a sudden all this stuff is going to change. But here's how, what you have to understand. If you don't change anything, nothing changes. Insanity says this, I want to keep doing the same thing, but every time I do it, I expect a different result. I don't like how 2020 happened. I don't like everything that went on in 2020. But I'm expecting a different 2021. What are you doing different? Oh, nothing. I just think it'll be different. Really? What's going to be so different if you continue to do the same thing just because there's a one now? 
You have to make the necessary changes in order to see the changes that you want to see happen in your life. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over and think everything's going to change. Everything's going to be better. I'm going to like this person tomorrow when I wake up. Why? What are you doing different? Nothing. Can't stand them right now. <laughs> but I'll, I'll like them tomorrow. Really? Yeah. What do you do? Nothing. Why do I need to do anything different? It's 2021 now. You have to make the necessary changes in order to see the change come into your life. You can't continue to do the same thing. A calendar doesn't change anything. But here's the thing. Jesus changes everything. A calendar changes nothing. But Jesus changes everything. Without Jesus, this year will have just as much fear, worry, anxiety, debt, hate, judgment, loneliness, addiction, as it did last year. But with Jesus, you will have more hope, peace, love, joy, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control than you've ever had in your entire life. You will have more of Jesus. But if you want to change, then you have to make a change. See, I want you to understand this, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the God that got you through 2020 is the God that's going to carry you through 2021. Because I don't know what 2021 holds. I just know who holds 2021. See, I know this, no matter how bad it has been, God will be there to lift you up and set your feet on solid ground. I know that He will lead you beside still waters. I know that He is your peace, that He is your comfort, that He is your grace, that He is your love, that He is your joy, and that He is your faithfulness. And when things are good, I know that God is good. But when things are bad, I also know that God is good. And I know Him. And I know you can trust Him. And it may be dark, but I want you to know this, that Jesus is your light. Listen, it may be scary, but I want you to know that Jesus is your refuge. It may be lonely, but I want you to know that Jesus is your comfort. Listen, you may be hurting right now, but I want you to know that Jesus is your healer. If you want something different, you have to make the necessary changes. So every single year, I take some time and I just spend really focusing and praying on what it is. Well, what is this word and this focus that God wants us to have for 2021? And so last year in 2020, the word that God gave us was no regrets. We, I really felt like going into 2020, I knew what that was going to look like. I knew what that meant for us as a church. We were growing and, you know, fixing to start our fourth service as a church. I mean, we, we were building a new building. Like everything was just incredible, going, I mean, unbelievable. And I felt like that's what it meant. Just continue to press in, chase after God. And then all of a sudden, everything that I read began to happen. And it changed. And so here's what I know. I have no clue what 2021 is going to hold. But I know what my response is going to be. See, today what you have to do is determine what your response is going to be. Not wait, but you have to set in your heart today, this is who I am and this is how I'm going to respond. And so God gives us a word every single year that He wants us to hold on to. And He wants us to focus on. And He wants us to say that, hey, here's what's coming ahead. And here's how you respond. Hey, you may not see what's coming, but you can see how you're going to respond. See, it's like me when I was a young teenager and uh, I, I began dating girls and my mom and dad said, hey, what you need to do is this. You need to set in your mind that you're not going to cross these boundaries physically. Because if you will set in your mind now and determine now that this is what you're going to do, then when the moment comes, the decision's a lot easier to make. But they said, but Johnny, listen. If you get caught up in the moment and you haven't determined where your boundary was and what you were going to do, then here's the problem. 
the line you're going to set is going to be a line that you regret. Because in that moment, it's hard to say no. You got a pretty girl looking you in the eye, batting those eyes. That's what they did every time. You're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Before I ever got in this situation, I had made my mind up what I was going to do. So it doesn't matter how big your eyelashes are and how much you battle. It's not going to change my mind. Because I've already determined in my heart what I'm going to do. See, what we get to do today is we get to determine in our heart how we're going to respond no matter what comes our way. As good as God is and as hard as times are, we know this is the word God has for me. And this is my response. And so the word that we got for the year, honestly, it came a couple months ago when I was preaching through 1 Peter. And I knew right when I read it. But I continued to search out and I continued to uh, wonder what it is that God, God, is there another word? And I knew God just kept bringing me back to this and just saying, this is the word for the year. And the word for the year, 2 Peter 2, verse 15 says this, For it is God's will that you silence the voice of the ignorant by doing good. It's God's will. Jumped right off the page at me. And here's how I get a word from God. As I'm reading through, I don't, I don't just grab my Bible and I don't just, you know, plop it open and just, what does this say? Uh, this says, uh, the Lord is my portion. I have promised to keep your word. I have sought your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promises. Yep, that's it. No, through my daily quiet time, here's, here's what I have. And I want to encourage you, uh, you, you know, moms, dads with your families. Um, this is a prayer sheet that I have that I pray through. Um, this is a prayer sheet that I have that I pray through. Uh, and, and so it's got my kids' prayer request on there. Um, got mine and Heather's. Uh, it's got different quotes that we really like that I want to hold on to. Um, this is our 21 days a prayer that we went through not too long ago that we're fixing to go through again as a church of prayer and fasting that we go through every year. Um, and, and so that's what we do. And so I've got specific things to pray for. And now in my Bible, we have this that I read through every single day. And, and so I've got these and I know where I'm going when I read. Um, and, and so I just let the word do what the word does. And I let the word speak to me. I don't go looking for a word. I let the word speak to me through my daily quiet time. And so in my, in my preparation, in my quiet time, reading through the word, this jumped off the page to me. And it said this, it's God's will. You want to know what God wants you to do? This is it. Silence the voice of the ignorant by doing good. So the word for this year is this, do good. And so here's what I want to do. I don't want to spend a lot of time right now uh, retracing our steps through 1 Peter because uh, we've already been there and we've already done it. But I do want to give you a little background so that you can understand what 1 Peter looks like and what 1 Peter is uh, so that you can get the context of what he's saying and why he's saying do good. And so in 1 Peter chapter uh, 2, verse 11, it says this, Dear friends, I urge you, as strangers and temporary residents, to abstain from fleshly desires that war against you. And so the first thing that I want you to see is this, that you are strangers and temporary residents. This world is not your home. And if this world is your focus, then you are going to miss out on what God wants to do in your life. You're going to miss out on the greatness of who God is, chasing the things that will fade away and pass away. My sister was 39, had seven kids from the age of 4 to 14, and passed away with cancer. And before she died, she told my mom and dad, she told her kids, she told her husband, she told her family, this world is not my home, and this world is not your home. We are temporary residents walking through this earth so that we can spend our eternity with the one who created us, who wants to have a relationship with us. If I could give you a picture and it doesn't even do justice of what eternity will look like. If I could take a rope and wrap it around the room 
And it comes all the way back and it's standing right up here on stage with me. And then I take a marker and I put a little dot on that rope. That dot represents our life here on earth. That dot represents the time that you and I will spend here on this earth. Everything that takes place from our birth to our death. The time we spend in high school. The friends that we make. Uh, The person that we marry, the kids that we have, the job that we have, all of that is tied up into that little dot right there. But the rest of that rope represents our eternity in heaven with God forever. Why is it that we spend so much time focusing on that little dot? Why is it that we waste so much energy trying to chase after and achieve something that in the end will fade away? You don't take it with you. You don't get to keep it. What matters is eternity. And this is the framework that Paul, that Peter is working with right here. And he's saying this, this is not your home. This isn't it. Stop packing like you're moving there. Heather and I are moving, so we're packing up the house right now. It's terrible. But listen, when we go on vacation, I pack different than I move. Why? Because when I move, I'm not coming back. I don't get to keep a set of keys and walk through the door one day and just go, Hey guys, (laughs) oh, I'm going to sleep in that room tonight. Whoa, 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 not your home. I used to live here. Yeah, but it's not your home anymore. But so many of us, we focus on this world. And we live for the things of this world and we miss out on what God wants to do. But the second thing is this, look at this. In verse 12, conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that in a case where they may speak against you as those who do what is evil and they will, by observing your good works, glorify God. So here's what it basically says, your character matters. This is what Peter's saying, your character matters. Conduct yourselves in a way uh, among people who don't believe Jesus. Conduct yourselves in a way among those people that are around you, so that those who don't know Jesus will then come to know Jesus. Like act in a way to where when you walk into a room, people look and they go, I need what he has. I need what she has. There's a joy. There's a hope. There's a peace inside of them that I've never seen before. I want that. I'm missing that and I want it. And it says in everything that you do, in every area of life, you represent Jesus. You may be the only Jesus that somebody sees. And if they see you and the reflection of Jesus to them, is it going to draw them near to Jesus or push them away? Is it going to bring them closer to who Jesus is and say, I need that Jesus that he's talking about? Or are they going to look and they're going to say, nothing different. See, what Peter says is you have to conduct yourselves in a way. You have to live in such a way that people need Jesus when they're around you. That people want Jesus when they're around you. That people get fired up when they're around you because of your relationship with Jesus. And they look at a fire and they say, man, I will kick down hell with a water pistol with this guy. Like this guy, I I will go to battle with him because he has some passion inside of him. That's what Peter's saying. Setting the framework for what he wants to tell us. Verse 15 says this, For it is God's will that you silence the voice of the ignorant. God's will. God's desire for your life. What is foolishness though? Look at Proverbs 18 too. It says this, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. A fool isn't interested in the truth. He's only interested in telling you what he thinks. You watch TV lately? (laughs) A fool is only interested in telling you what he thinks, not in the truth. Proverbs 29.11 says this, A fool gives full vent... To his spirit. But a wise man quietly holds, his back, holds it back. A wise man bites his tongue. A fool says exactly what's on his heart. 
and then comes to regret it later. Have you ever said anything, done anything? It's just like, ah, oh, shouldn't have done that. The Bible calls that foolish. Proverbs 18.6, this is my favorite, and this is what's hanging on my wall really, really big. Well, it's going to be hanging on my wall in my office really, really big. A fool's lips walks into a fight, and his mouth invites a beating. Come on, somebody. That's in the Bible. Got to punch a fool right in the mouth. That's what the Bible says. Like, boom, you talking foolish? Ah! Drop them right there. And then claim, Proverbs 18, 6, ha, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to knock you flat out. And that bloody lip as they're walking away, just quote scripture to them. Proverbs 18, 6, open your mouth again, I'll do it again. And another one for that other lip too. Love it. Love it. Scripture is so good. Listen, some of y'all, you're not reading your Bible and you're missing out. You get to punch people in the name of Jesus. Come on. Golly, some of y'all like Google, like I've, that's my live verse. I'm Googling that right now. Getting t-shirts printed. We will get a t-shirt printed with that on there. That's awesome. Uh, that's a great idea. We're going to have a face with a fat lip and this verse underneath it. Come to church. I promise you. I'll be, I'm wearing it next week. That's good. <laughs> I didn't even think of that in the first service, but we're doing that. Who wouldn't want to come to a church where there's a fat lip and you're like, hey, punch him. <laughs> Say something stupid, punch him. He invited, like the Bible says, he invited a beating. <laughs> Not even a punch. This is a beating. Man. I love God's word. But here's the thing, Psalms 14, 1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. It's God's will that you silence the voice of the ignorant, that you are bold, that you speak truth. By, verse, by thought number four, do good. 1 Peter 2.15 says this, For it is God's will that you silence the voice of the ignorant by doing good. I want to punch somebody, but God says do good. God says do good. See, actions speak louder than words. I love you means nothing without the actions behind it. I can't tell my wife, hey, I love you, babe. Never spend time with her, never hold her hand, never talk to her. Every time she walks into a room, we're silent, sitting on other, you know, ends of the couch. Love you. Never help her with anything. Never think of her. Never go out of my way. Never sacrifice myself for her. Love you. All of a sudden, those words become worthless. Because love is a verb. But here's the same thing with what God wants you to do this next year. Doing good is a verb. You can't just choose and you can't just say, I'm going to do good and do nothing and not change anything in your life, not change anything in your heart, not change the way that you think, not change the way that you live. See, doing good is sharing the gospel. It's telling people about Jesus. It's being bold. It's not keeping your mouth shut, but it's being bold and standing up for the truth. Doing good is living like Jesus. It's looking at your life and evaluating everything that you do and it's saying, I I'm not going to live the way that I want to live, but I want to reflect and model who Jesus is to a lost and dying world. And so I want them to see Jesus in me and I want to live that way. So I may de deny some of the things that I want to do so that, uh, so that others can then find and follow Jesus. It's loving like Jesus. It's loving people who don't love you. It's loving when it's not easy. It's loving when everybody else has turned their back on you. Doing good is helping other people. Not when it's easy, when it's hard. 
Not when it's convenient, but when it's inconvenient. Doing good is considering others rather than yourself. It's thinking of others before it thinks of yourself. It's walking into this year not saying, hey, it's all about me. It's all about what I can do. It's all about what I can get out of this year. But it's looking and it's saying, how can I be a blessing and help others? How can I make a difference in their life? Doing good is controlling yourself. Doing good is not insisting in your way. Hey, it's, it, like we either do it my way or we're not doing it. Doing good is giving. And it's desiring to give more than it is to receive. I'll help somebody, but what do I get out of it? I'll give, but I mean, where's my return? I'll give, but, you know, what, what am I getting back from this? Doing good is building up and not tearing down. This year, my desire for you is to do good in every area of your life. So I want to look at four things that good does. First thing is this, good is always in action. It's always in action. Look at what it says, Micah 6, 8. And he has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require? But that you do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. What is justice? Well, it's fighting for what's right. It's fighting for what's right. It's fighting for truth. It's fighting for what God says. See, justice is not an emotional stance. Because sometimes what we do is we chase truth through emotions. Well, this feels like it's right. This feels like it's true, so I'm going over here. And now all of a sudden we turn and we're like, ah, that doesn't feel right anymore, so I'm going over here. And we claim them to be truth even though they're not truths, they're emotions. And so what we have to do, justice is this. Justice is fighting for what is true. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. His word does not change. His stance does not change. We do not get to look at society and say society has gone so far away from God. God's standards needs to move closer to society in order for it to be okay. What we have to do is we have to look and say, God, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us for running from you and bring us back to you. We need to line up with your standards, not you come and move your line. God will never move his line. Justice is always claiming that no matter how hard. Justice is standing up and saying God's way is the right way, period. How do you know? Because his word says. Period. I trust it. I believe it. I follow it. Period. Kindness. It's doing the right thing even when it's not easy. See, doing good is an action. It's doing the right thing even when it's not easy. Even when everybody's against you. Even when everybody says it's not true. It's doing the right thing. Walking in humility. It's understanding this life is not about me. But it's about the one who created me, who loved me, who died for me. And who gives me an eternity in heaven, not because of who I am and what I've done, but because of what Jesus is and what Jesus has done for me. Second thing is this, good defeats evil. Romans 12, 21 says this, Do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Just as light always defeats the darkness, good always defeats evil. Good always defeats evil. Jesus wins in the end. Evil consumes you when you are totally consumed with evil. So how do you fight your problems, your sins, your addictions, your struggles, your temptations, by doing good. By getting your focus off of yourself and onto someone else. 
when sin is creeping up and when sin is knocking at your door, what do you need to do? Worship. Turn on music and begin to worship. Why? Because it takes your focus off of you and the sin that is right there in front of you and it gets your focus onto who Jesus is. You begin to sing and praise who God is. Open your Bible and begin to read your Bible. Quote scripture that you have memorized. Go out and start telling somebody about Jesus. When that sin is creeping at the door, the best thing that you can do is get your mind and your focus off of yourself and on to Jesus. Go encourage somebody. Go give of your time, give of your finances. Just go give and get your mind off of yourself and on to somebody else when temptation is knocking. Because if you are consumed by evil, then evil will consume you. But good can win. The third thing is this. God is not confused. Good is not confused. Isaiah 5, 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe is this. Woe is a strong warning of God's judgment on your life. Woe is somebody standing in the middle of the street and the bridge is out and it's completely dark and you don't have any headlights up in front of you and they know that if you continue to drive, where you're going is going to kill you. Woe is that person standing there going, Stop! Stop! Don't go! No, 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 stop! you got to stop! Quit! Don't keep going! Because here's what we do in this world and here's what we see through evil. Is people are saying evil now is good and this is okay. And when we look to the word of God and we see what the word of God has to say, we find out that what people are trying to tell us is good is actually evil. And it does not line up with the character of God. And we have to be very, very careful. And we have to do what's good and what is good by telling people, whoa, 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 stop. Don't keep going down this path. But my heart is telling me this is what's true. But the Bible also says your heart is deceitful, wicked. And who can tame it and who can trust it? You you can't trust your heart. Stop. Don't keep going because it's taking you down a path. I promise you don't want to go. It's saying, well, what do we do so many times? Cry out and we say, hey, evil, it's it's okay. (laughs) Not that bad. Not that big of a deal. You're making too big a deal out of this. And God's saying, whoa, whoa. The last thing is this. God is always working for your good. Come on, somebody. We do good and God works for our good. Look at what it says in Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together For the good of those who are called according to his purpose. You have a God in heaven right now who is working on your behalf, but not just working on your behalf, working on your behalf for your good, for the best in your life. God is working for you so that the good that he has placed inside of you for the direction that he has for you. Listen, I know it's been a struggle. I know it's been hard. I know there's been some tough times, but you have to know God is still on his throne and God is still working for your good. Come on. And so today, here's what I want you to understand and know. I don't know what 2021 is going to look like. I predicted 2020 and failed miserably. (laughs) So I'm not even going to try in 2021. But here's what I know. I know how I'm going to respond. I'm going to do good. When it's easy, yep, I'm going to do good. When everything's good, yep, I'm going to do good. When it's hard, I'm going to do good. When it hurts, I'm going to do good. When I'm standing alone, I'm going to do good. I will not back down from the truth of God's word. But I will boldly take a stand for who God is and his word. And I will always do good.
God is working for your good because he loves you. Will you pray with me? Listen, as you bow your heads and close your eyes right now, here's what I want to encourage you. Maybe there's some of you sitting out here and you're saying, I don't know Jesus. I don't have a relationship with Jesus. And I need one. I need to know Jesus. There's no better way to start 2021 than by giving your heart and your life to Jesus. If you died today, do you know where you'd spend your eternity? It's a question that was asked me a long time ago. And I had to say no. Well, the Bible says you can know. You can know today that if you died today, you would spend your eternity in heaven, not because of who you are or what you've done, but because of Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. What he did on the cross for you. And so today, the Bible says this, don't brag about tomorrow because you don't know what a day is going to hold. The Bible says this, today is the day of your salvation. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Trust God today. Give Him your heart. Give Him your life. And so if that's you, if you're watching online, wherever you are right now, tuning in, I want you to pray this prayer with me. The church is going to pray it out loud. But the Bible says if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That's what we're going to do. So pray this prayer out loud with me. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I believe that he came to the earth, died on the cross, and rose from the grave. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life. Save me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, would you celebrate those that made a decision today? Come on, what a better way to start the new year than people giving their heart and their life to Jesus today. If that's you, there's a number on the screen right now. I want you to text that number. And I want you to text that number, and I just want you to put saved right there. Or if you're in the room right now, there's a card in the seat in front of you. Fill that card out. Get it in one of the staff's hands, one of the volunteers' hands before you leave. Celebrate what God's done. But maybe right now, let's stand to our feet. We're going to go out of here. We're going to go out of here worshiping because here's what we need to do. Maybe some of you still need to do business with God and you just need to say, God, I want to set my mind on doing good. I want you to be my focus for 2021. So let's just spend some time right now worshiping before we go.